How do you sort out the so-called jargon from real-world practices that work? Do the members of your organization find some business or technology advice utterly confusing? Welcome to Real Talk with Sam Holzman. In this program, we set the record straight and in terms that business people and technology people can understand. Now, here is your host, Sam Holzman. Welcome to this edition of Real Talk. I'm Sam Holzman. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, our broadcast today is regarding a new phenomena out there that uh, uh, has, we suggest, some pretty strong consequences if organizations uh, don't take an active role right now in figuring out what to do. What is that? It's called shadow AI, shadow artificial intelligence. And for those of you in the technology world that remember the shadow IT situation where uh, stakeholders uh, took it upon themselves to, uh, I hate to use the word circumvent, but that's really what it was, circumvent uh, central IT organizations and start doing their own thing. And there was a lot of reasons for this. I'm not in, in, indicting anyone or, you know, the stakeholders or the IT organization, but basically it really got a little messy. Well, let me summarize here. Shadow AI is going to make shadow IT look like child's play. Because what we're talking about here now is information that is strategic in your organization that may or may not be handled in an appropriate manner. It's not because the stakeholders are doing something wrong per se, but there's an education issue. When you start playing around with public AI, it's a whole different game. Your data, your organization's data is your most valuable asset. And I'm not sure that people recognize that when it's in a public AI engine, uh, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's training, and it's uh, cybering, and it's uh, yucking. <laughs> it is a real mess. This is crucial. The balance, of course, is how business people, stakeholders, can start using some of this stuff for their own use. Because, frankly, the tools for good reason or bad reason, are pretty easy to use. What we're seeing right now from just a little bit of research, because it hasn't been around very long, uh, 50 to 70% of people in the organization are using AI. And getting this wrong, the costs are astronomical. Not only dollar cost but losing your competitive advantage. I'm not trying to sound like the sky is falling, but the sky is falling. And uh, what we need to recognize is when shadow IT occurred, it was there for a reason in most organizations, and that was either the real or perceived, in quotes, slow le- snow, slowness, excuse me, slowness of the IT department responding to business requirements. And so in the case of shadow AI, it may be the same thing, or it's just experimental. It's just so easy, uh, you know, to do, to do this stuff. And the issue here now is that every person has the ability in your organization to use AI for good purposes, but possibly not know that what they're doing is actually exposing enterprise situations. Please remember that AI in the public domain is learning from your data, whether it's confidential, proprietary, copyrighted, right now, all of these things. If it's in the public domain, you're using an AI engine in the public domain, it doesn't matter what your rules say internally if it's already out there. So all your intellectual property and things like that are at risk. Trade secrets, private information, confidential information, all of these very innocent-looking situations are out there. So what are you going to do about it? Well, 
I know this sounds funny, but you got to sort of like start educating everybody with policies first. And I know policies are just that policies and say, Hey, let's explain here what this is all about. In other words, educate your own stakeholders, either by the way, it people and business people as to what all this is and the consequences to them personally and the business of this thing going awry. And it would be nice if all organizations had a data architecture, not just data warehouse, by the way, or data distribution center or lake houses or all that other stuff that you hear. Those are implementations. But an architecture that can be pointed to and essentially stratified into, using some simple terms, two buckets. Do not even think about using this stuff outside of the, the, the walls of our enterprise, and this stuff may be okay. And there's obviously better solutions I'll talk about in just a mo- moment. And what you want to do is to actually retain complete control of that sensitive information by not using the public AI, but bringing the AI engine in-house. And that's happening more and more and more. You're bringing, and you, and you need to separate that usage from using AI with your own data. And, of course, we're going to see this, and this may be the appropriate time to really think about cloud, right-sizing the cloud, and possibly bringing some workloads back in-house just because of this reason alone. So we're going to call it enterprise AI is what we call it. Enterprise artificial intelligence. And the phrase, of course, some of you have heard me use this before, uh, enterprise augmented information. I hope this helps. This is not the sky is falling. The sky has already fallen. What we want to do is try to prevent as much information, much uh, uh, of an issue as possible. On the other hand, we really do want to enable our stakeholders to be able to use these new powerful tools But we need to make sure that everyone, technology people and business people, recognize what the situation is in this new world. I hope this helps. Thanks for listening. Thank you for tuning in to Real Talk. Be sure to join your host, Sam Holzman, again for another edition of our program. We'll have more Real Topics of discussion then.